have a chance. Will they secure it right here, right now, in this round? They're in the B-bomb side. Flush getting a chance to reload back up. It's already here. Markiev Shima with a stunning shot. A shot down all of Meister. It's now 4v4. JW still alive. Kenny gets a kill on Crims. Flusher in the back lines. He's out of ammo. A knife is out. What's happening? Flusher! He's oh. getting stabbed. He got on the clock as JDM picks up two big kills, a third one coming in. Somehow, the American sniper saves them and JDM. How tough is it going to be for Fnatic to actually keep this bomb side? There's the flash, that's going to catch Crims out, they're going to push on through. MBK gets one, but Crims with a spray down, he gets himself the triple! The Fnatic are not done yet! Freiburg is going to be walking around, that bomb is down. And Freiburg looking for a way to equalize the situation. He's going to be walking up, spots Pronax here in the corner, takes him down, turns around for the 180, still 15 bullets there. Freiburg launches it, are you kidding? It's going to be a double, he does it again, and again, and again! Goldmeister will find the shot on Exist. Freiburg does return, picks off Pronax. He's still here, though, and he's going for more. Two big frags. The third man is here, however, and Freiburg has to back off. But Freiburg somehow opens it up single-handedly. All three frags. All he has to do is stay alive, and it's going to be great. Oh, he picks up a quad kill. He can do even better than staying alive. He's brave. Freiburg misses, and that's the enemies. He picks it up single-handedly. Kiyoshima has to go for the quad kill here to win the round. Flusher, is he gonna move closer? Kiyoshima has to hold it down. Nine bullets and he stops it. Kiyoshima, you gotta be kidding. He actually wins that round and it's seven to three. Hiko picking up a kill and it's all down to cold zero. Now the Deagle goes for the fight, takes out Hiko, and now it's a one on one. There is nothing they can do any longer. NIP have won. I don't think there's any chance. Flusher looking to end this. SK Gaming, second major championship in a row. They are your winners. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the grand final. That is right. We have arrived with just two teams left. And no matter what happens today, all of you here in the arena will be part of history. Which history will be written, we'll find out over the next few hours. One team is here to try and repeat from 2016. One is here to try and lift a curse, a curse no less, that has lasted 12 years since Complexity won a CS tournament on European soil. The fans are ready. The arena is ready. Are you ready for the grand final of ESL 1 Cologne? Our first grand finalists have a man celebrating 10 years as a professional CSGO player. They were champions last year at an ESL tournament for the first time in 10 years. They are back yet again to prove the doubters wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, flying the flag for North America, Cloud9! And their opponents, 
attempting to make history of their own by winning a third consecutive title and a repeat of the ESL1 Cologne 2006 champions. Please welcome to the arena, SK Gaming! Ladies and gentlemen, once more, Cloud9 and SK Gaming. Okay, I'm just gonna get a few words with both captains before we start things off. Gabrielle, just a few quick words. I don't wanna disturb you. I know you wanna get in the mode and get concentrated on the match, but just a, a few words on what this means to you in terms of this crowd, this arena. Playing Lexus Arena is one of the best feelings ever. We're gonna do a great show, and we're gonna revenge ourselves for the last finals we play against here today. Any final words for your fans? This is the best crowd in the world, and we're gonna make you proud. Good luck, SK. Jordan. Um, just a very quick word with you. I'm good. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Looking forward to uh, denying SK some revenge. Okay, I like that. You did it last year. Everyone, um, everyone wrote you off last year. Everyone said no North American teams can do this kind of thing. You've proved them wrong time and time again. Is this one step that you want to deliver again? Of course, baby. We want to show up, play our game, leave everything in the server, and bring a good match for the fans. Let's do this. Okay, let's do this, ladies and gentlemen. Cologne's current champions, SK Gaming versus Cloud9. ESL1 Cologne, we've got it again. It's no Europeans in the final SK return, but this time Liquid's precipitation lives in the clouds as they try to dominate EU for the first time in 12 years. It's going to be a good one, Matthew. Best of five coming up here. There's a chance with Cloud9's current form, we could see all five. It very rarely happens, but I feel like the way Automatic's showing up, it's the same thing, but nothing as well. It could be the exciting five maps we're looking for. We're kicking things off on Cobblestone. A great map for both teams, but you have to give the edge slightly towards SK, I think, but we'll see who turns up today. Absolutely, and turning up has been the key for Cloud9. We know on Cobble, they've been very explosive. Although they thought on the desk this veto may not have gone toward them, there's still a chance on the T side. You can break out of the choke points, you can wear them down with utility, and if the shots are being landed, especially by Skadoodle on entry on an AWP, especially by Stewie, automatic, this can be a game that is very hard for SK and could slip away immediately. That's one of the key battles, I think. You brought up Skadoodle as well. Obviously, Fallen finding his form, absolutely. Skadoodle looking the best ever, probably in the last couple of years we've seen him, so that's going to be a really exciting battle to follow as this grand final develops. You can see the teams out getting the final huddles in, Matt, just kind of discussing what tactics are going with. This is the thing about grand finals as well. The rule book is thrown away. The new strategies are coming out on the fly. Plays will be coming in. It's going to be exciting, exhilarating, and hopefully we do see some of those epic plays we saw in the semi-finals and the quarters. Keep in mind as well for SK, not only is this revenge against Cloud9, but this is also Despite them being Brazilian, where SK was born and bred, they yeah. are a Cologne organization. Their office is not far from the Lanxus. So it means a lot in that sense to make sure they get a, essentially what would be a second best home win. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Matt, the analyst gave their thoughts. Do you feel like Cloud9 have a chance in this one? Can they take a best of five against SK Gaming? Could they do it again? There's absolutely a chance. 
absolutely could happen. If they can get under the skin early, if they can get control of the game, if they can force SK out of their comfort zones, force them to be constantly rotating and never yeah. let them set up, then yes, absolutely there is a chance. The CT side's a lot harder on Cobblestone to take that fight. But as I said, on the T side, if they can get an early lead, if they can get a run out on the T side, yes, absolutely there's a chance. It's going to be hard. It's definitely SK's to lose sure. for Cloud9 to have a chance. Cloud9 chose to start on the CT side. So they're going to have some tricks on their sleeve here. We know that one of the teams that like to have lack of respect counter strike. We need to see that sometimes. If they start crumbling, they go very quiet, but quite cagey. We can't really have that. They're going to have a chance this grand final against one of the world's very best. Certainly underdogs here, Cloud9. But I do think they have a chance. And hopefully, we do see them get a couple of maps here and take them right to the wire. We'll see what happens here. They start a sit down map. Something quite magical about this venue, isn't there? Absolutely. An incredible venue. And I have to say, since I've not spoken to those of you in the audience since the last time, I requested you to spell out ESL. I'm impressed. I did you it. are my favorite crowd. I said you would be if you did it, and you guys pulled off what I did not think was possible. So well done, Cologne. And hopefully SK and Cloud9 twos to treat you just the same. He's got his shirt on this time. Yeah, you like to see that. Nothing, what a performance I watched yesterday against Na'Vi, like lights out from him, rolling back the years in many ways in terms of clutches and impact frags he was having. It was great to see, and that man especially, Shroud, amazing performance. He's got his, his, his doubters out there, but he's had a great tournament so far, I'd say. I feel like the crowd are favoring Cloud9 generally. It seemed that way. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're getting there. They've got a hype, man. I wasn't sure which way this would favor. Everyone loves the underdog. Well, they certainly won't play like it. Summertime Cloud9, a week away from a major as well. It's the right time to peak. Headsets go on. A lot of nerves heading into a game like this for obvious reasons. The good news is for Cloud9, they've been a roster as a five-man unit for well over a year at this point in time. Yeah. It hasn't been the most successful story, probably hitting that peak and Sao Paulo when they beat this very team. Can they replicate that once again? What a storyline that is. SK looking for revenge. I'm not sure it's going to be an easy battle for them, though. Shroud, if he turns up, we could have a hell of a game on our hands. So just about into it. You said it, Cloud9 starting, electing to start on the CT side. So I am very curious as to how they want to engage. And if SK early wants to try and let Cloud9 sort of fall into their own trap, be a victim yeah. of their own aggression. If they sit back and say, okay, you control the pace, let's see what you've got. And if, because it is such a hard map to be aggressive on, specifically on CT, if they start to do that and SK catches them it's, off, it'll certainly, it's negative reinforcement right away. It'll certainly set them back in their own spawns. The key players that can actually have aggression on the CT side of the AWPers usually, they can move around the map, they can go towards long, they can go top and middle and try and find those first picks. That's what we need from Skadoodle. He's often been criticized to be a player that lacks assertive or picks at the very start of rounds, but he has looked much better in that respect. And hopefully he goes to get fallen right now and he's going to be one of the world's absolute best AWPers. So that's going to be an interesting battle to follow. Looks like we are getting there as the players start to warm up and get ready. Ladies and gentlemen, the grand final. Cloud9 versus SK Gamer, let's make some noise! Cobblestone will be the first map. T-side start for SK Gaming. We'll have a look at the buys as they come in. Four sets of armor, one smoke and a Molotov as well for Fallen. Expect a tactical execution here. And smoke and defuse kit for Skadoodle as well. It's looking like we'll be focusing towards the A-side of the map to kick things off here. One player holding B, that's going to be Taco. Looking for that aforementioned CT aggression. So automatic at danger, Skadoodle without the armor, but the utility is at the lower section of middle. They're going all toward long with the exception of Taco, as you mentioned, so it's going to be hard for automatic to find his way out of this. If he could get smoked off by Skadoodle and run back to the site, they could catch them as they try and enter, but he's alone down here. He's got to find kills. He's got one already. Good start. They jump in. Looks for a second. Does very well, considering the position. They'll give up long and allow the rotations from B to get toward Romeo and watch the entrance point. Instead, Skadoodle has to back off and continue to fight. Not spotted in the corner. It's all the kills for Cloud9 until Phelps pulls one back on Shroud. And they sit just one man the great on Cloud9, but is that enough to hold off SK, who seemed to want to back off a minute to work with? They're going to slow the pace down because their explosive entrance was completely shut down before it even arrived. They don't have the utility to work of anymore, but they certainly have the firepower available. Phelps and Fallen up against it now. Three on two situation. 
45 seconds here. They're trying to confuse the CT. Suggest they might have gone back to the B site. Stu controlling that area. First exchange coming in now. No damage inflicted just yet, but there it is. Nothing with the headshot. Makes it a three versus one for Phelps. Surely he can't do anything with this, and he can't. Nothing with the double fracker. Finish things off there. Cloud9, an emphatic start there to kick things off. Automatic towards danger by himself. Finds those two key frags, and SK Gaming just can't recover that. It's going to be 1 0 on the CT side on SK's pick. That's a fantastic start here for the North Americans. And of course, we'll see the force by return from the Brazilians right now. We're going to have Tech Knights, CZ, Armor, Smokes, and they're so deadly with this weaponry. Do not count them out of these sort of rounds. Cloud9 know it, and they haven't purchased a single rifle. That could be a mistake. Skadoodle. It's a great point. All SMGs was actually trying to push into the lower mid as well, where he would have been caught off by the pistols waiting just on the other side of the ramp. He smokes it off instead. He'll try and hold the position toward danger. They're going to stack up over toward B with the other four players on Cloud9. You do bring up a good point about the range, especially with the nerf, the recent nerf, if you want to call it that, on the UMP. Yeah. We're well, having an A split here. Bomb along A2 towards drop down as well, trying to find that first pick. And you can see Skadoodle has to go close range here with his MP7, trying to find the first kill, and he narrowly misses on the timing. Oh, that's unbelievable. He did. Okay, Fallen somehow takes him down. I thought that was a guaranteed frag. Now it's a five and four. We said SA can be dangerous in these rounds. Finding that first frag applies a lot of pressure towards Cloud9 now. A lot of utility as well. Automatic and Stewie will cover off the site split. 2-2 two, two either way. Shroud to control drop bomb. Still leading off toward the A site. Stewie wants to take the fight to get rest. Get flashed in. Finds Phelps. Molotov back toward the corner. And Shroud gets the two that want to split through connector by covering off drop. It's a good hold. This cold zero is the only one to get a kill back. It's on Stewie. Fallen gets ever closer. Remember, they all had armor in Tech Nines. Well, he's now picked up the MP7 that Skadoodle dropped early on, but he won't get any further than that. He will not get a bomb plant down. Cold's just fighting at this point to try and salvage the round. There's no way plant is in mind. It's all about kills. It's a one versus two. Knows one's close as well, based on the nade. Don't really have the range. The CZ has the accuracy. Oh, oh! He gets off with Cold Zero! What a way to start off for SK as they tie it 1 1. The world's best player. Punishes Cloud9 in the second round. They lost the first frag. They recovered. Stroud did enough here. Two kills and drop down. Stewie charming in as well. Surely he has no chance there. 30 HP. That's a misplay from Cloud9. They should be on the bomb side. They just watch the bomb. Stop him planting. Why are they giving him any sort of chance to duel at that stage? It's a blunder. The pressure is high. The nerves will be riding here for Cloud9. But those are not the mistakes Cloud9 can afford to make at any point, let alone at the start. If the momentum is killed early, that's when SK becomes dangerous. Absolutely. I think we have a timeout at this point just to recover, discuss what happened there. My God, I didn't think Aldera stood a chance. One kill, sure, but where was that refrag? Just panicking at seeing Cloud9 after recovered, losing after losing the first frag. Just to be clear, it was technical headset on the okay. SK side, so not a tactical charge to Cloud9. It would, you're right, arguably make sense to slow it down after a mistake like that, but it also would reveal so much early on. You can't afford to be emotional this sure. quickly. It's definitely worth playing with your heart in a final like this, but that can go both ways, so keep it in control. 1-1. One, one. Here we go, then. Cloud9 with the Force buy in return. They're going to have UMP, CZ, Deagles. Definitely skilled enough to pull the round back, but up against UMPs on the SK side as well. Fallen's got the Galil. They'll have a little Mac 10 there. He'll probably be used to throw it into the boards of the bomb sites to try and find those first picks and work out if there's any stacks on the other side. For now, focusing towards the B side of the map. We have Fallen and Phelps is watching for any rotation pushes from A. Self starts to be deployed. This could be brought down, controlled by SK at this stage, pushing them back with the team damage there, but they seem absolutely fine. Fur gets in, Mac 10. Shroud's watching E box side. Stewie will watch connector, but Mac 10 easily able to find Shroud. Boost it, tree for nothing, automatic hugging the wall at the alley. They'll turn their attention back to the E box. They know Fur's trying to make his way through. Automatic from far, nothing's gonna go as he tries to reload. That brings Cold down. Good time for Cold to drop because it would have left his teammate dangling. And he'll hold on to the position and find Automatic as well. All SK in control. Stewie can't even find a single kill. Five stay alive, we go 2-1 SK. Clinical stuff from SK Gaming. Five players surviving there, pushing the map at the start, getting the default set up, and then focusing on drop down. Once they had that, kill started coming in. Some basic execution. Cloud9 can't make a dent whatsoever in round number three. Has to be the full eco now. SK Gaming getting comfortable, can farm some cash here. Four SMGs available. And we'll see whether Cloud9 can do anything with this round. I don't think it purchased a single item into this. 
Depot pistols across the board, no armor, no kit. Automatic, trying to duel at the start there, has the ball back as he starts to get wall bang fur, finds the first shot on Shroud. It's dropped down once again as the main focus, and three kills coming in. Round done. Bomb still back toward T tunnels. Rotate back around to grab it. Automatic, it's Kadoodle not willing to leave middle. They're just going to stay as far back as possible. Frag money is a factor at this point in time, so at least if they can group up and knock down some guns, might be better off for them. But Cold's already found Scott from far. Builds up the money. Phelps does the same. Never mind the bomb plant. SK wins the round. SK in such a strong position now. They've got those four SMGs and the Galil as well. We normally call this the bonus round, right? But it's obviously a little different considering they actually won the force buy in a second. But they'll get rid of the MAC-10, upgrade to an AK-47. And Cloud9, sure they'll buy, but it's not looking great. Three M4s, a Famous, a UMP, one kit, and a lack of utility across the board. Yeah, if SK win this, keep in mind they kept five alive in the last two rounds with those SMGs. So not only were they building money with each kill, they were building a bank and not reinvesting. If they win this right now, they're in a huge, huge financial lead. They threw away a couple of the SMGs and why not? You've got so much money here. You're guaranteeing round victories by getting AKs out and actually overpowering Cloud9 generally. It's going to be a D4 at the start here, focusing towards long A, but that's where Skadoodle and Automatic are waiting for them. We have seen Skadoodle step up in terms of rifle precision, but is it enough to take down SK Gaming? Automatic to challenge first. Oh, flashed in. Can't find anything. Falling gets him early. Grabs the M4 immediately. Yeah, too easy for SK at that point. One flash through, and he's going to take a four on one situation for Automatic to make a dent there. Can't find a single frag. Takes Phelps down to 41 HP. This is where SK gaming are their best. They've got a five on four. They've got to wait for CT reactions. Bait out some more grenades. Bleed the CTs dry. And it's up to Skadoodle alone on the A bomb site. Taco to show presence towards B, a drop down. He'll just be holding the rotations of that side of the map. His teammates potentially fully execute on A here. They still have smokes, Molotovs, flashbangs. And Skadoodle there with no utility, no kit, no head armor as well. He's going to have a really rough time with this one. Taco now making his final play towards B, and here come the smoke today. Hold and fall and lead the charge. Ska's in it. Stables watch the jump, clip the wall. Missed timing. It could work, but only for one for Ska. Gives Shroud a better entrance point, though, because he's able to cross over before they get any nearer to the site. In a better position to fend off the bomb site directly with Stewie as well. Smoked off, but it's going to be all Shroud. They have to watch. Good trade out by nothing. Gets one. Shroud. He steps up so far. He's still in it. He's still got a chance with his positioning. He's caught off cold. The plant as well, but he doesn't go for it. He doesn't try to deny as cold. Gets it down, and he gets the kill as well. Cold is absolutely dead cold right now. Stone cold as he finds another round for SK. Planting the bomb with four seconds remaining as well. Shroud thought it was the bait, and that's a very common play. This is. Fantastic work from Shroud generally. We saw Skadoodle only get one frag, but all things considered, that's as good as it was going to get. He bought some time for his teammates. The rotations were decent. They got themselves on the bomb site. Comes down to the 1v1, but once again, Cold Zero runs away with it. Headshot to Shroud. He could have rushed him and denied the plan, but it was too risky. And we go into round number six. We said this was financial turmoil for Cloud9. And once again, just with the pistols. P250s, Deagles, no armor, no nades. Stewie. He invested 650 bucks into some body armor, that's about it. I don't think that's going to be bringing them around victory anytime soon. Mac 10 comes out for fur once again. He can investigate the bomb sites, and here we go, towards drop down once again. That's where they found most of the success, flashing by the teammates and trying to open things up here. Good shot from fur. Oh, just spraying it down clinical at this point. Kid Canuck, the last alive. Teagle for him at far, can't find anything. Pitched into the doorway. All over him, good shot. At least gets Taco, and they haven't pushed through the window just yet. Fallen's going to enter him with the bomb. He's got the AWP already. Excuse me, no, he doesn't. He has the AK-47, of course. But he gets the kill at range. You know, five to one. Bit of excitement, but SK is still surmounting a lead. Yeah, some close encounters in Cloud9 having a few clutch situations, but here's the recovery play. Stewie 2K, AWP, same story for Skadoodle as well. Double orbs, difficult to master on Cobblestone CT side. Could be shut down by full executions towards A, but we haven't seen much of that from SK so far. Skadoodle going towards long air. We said he lacked assertiveness recently, but this is looking good. Trying to find the first pick. Doesn't fully commit. Fallen's waiting on the other side. That is not a play you want to meet in a one-on-one -on -one or battle. Time ticking away, and Terrorist is feeling things out. Another default. Looks at like our focus towards drop down once again. That's where Fur and Coldera are heading towards. Taco watching the upper platform. Bleed out the CTs. This is where SK starts to slow it down. 
Still wants it. Has to take control of the drop room. They'll put furlough again with cold to watch from above. Same play we saw with the MAC-10 on round three. It's almost the same setup, identical, except that they don't have anyone boosted on tree this time. Nothing's below, and Stewie's out closer to the balcony. Furlough's gotten very close, and Shroud's still watching the reverse side because of smoke at the window. They have no idea what's inside of Connector. He's got a little bit of room to work with, therefore. Until now. Shroud and Nothing have a crossfire set from Rock, and you can see Nothing's position on the right side. That tagged him as well. That nade actually hitting him gives away that he was there. 40 seconds remain. It's going to be Stewie's to strike first. The secondary orb for Cloud9 finds the first frag. Still aggressive as well. Doesn't want to give anything away to SK Gaming, but he does. Fallen finds him, and that'll be the cue to make their way towards the B side. Such a great start. It's pulled back, though. Simple AWP kill, but pushed through the smoke. Nothing's ready for it. He's going to be ready for oh. box, or is he? Because Cold catches him off again with good accuracy. He's lost Taco. Gets them a man advantage on the Cloud9 side, but Cold is still wreaking havoc. Look at him go. He's got it down to Jitskadoodle remaining. Bomb is dropped. They can't get to the site, but Cold doesn't care where they go. He's just going to put them six feet under and make it six to one. How can you do anything against that? Just when you get the lead, and it looks like it's an impossible situation. Ten seconds. Cold Zero just does this. How is he hitting that shot? How is he not dead? Skadoodle, nothing you can do at that point. Cold Zero is just a man possessed right now. Currently sitting at 15 frags, one death after seven rounds. That's a monstrous performance. The world's best player showing up in spades. Unbelievable start. And this time, undoubtedly, it's not technical. This is yeah. tactical from timeout. What can you from do, though? Nine, excuse me. They're, they're, not, they're doing everything correct. They're finding the opening picks. They're holding off the executions. It's coming down to the clutches. But Cold Zero, every single time, he clutched it out in the second round force by. He did it again in the following round. And what an amazing performance there in round number seven. He's playing out of his mind, and they can't shut him down. One death so far after seven rounds. So it is a tactical charge. It's not started yet. They've got to make sure Valen's mic is able to work. Apparently, there's a small issue there. But this will be one of five because they'll take the 30 seconds once he's able to talk. I want a four, excuse me, there we go. What's the answer going to be? Because Cloud9 are not finding the openings, they aren't playing explosive, they can't get any map control. That's the problem with Cobblestone though, it doesn't really suit their playstyle. Maps like Train, there's plenty of options to flash in a pop dog, main entrance, Ivy, you can push things and try and get opening picks in your favor and allow your superstars to get their confidence built up. You don't really have that access and Cobblestone is lying in wait and trying to fend them off one by one. Stewie did what he could there. As he found the first pick, maybe he wants to fall back at that stage. Keep the man advantage, set up the crossfires. He went for another and I like I like the, the arrogance to try and take down Fallen, but if you give him an inch, he's going to take a mile every single time. Round number eight, Stewie purchases a scout and body armor here. He seems to be investing more money than his teammates, but... Still sat at 2,700. They do have maximum loss bonus, so they'll have a full by next round, but SA Gaming looking very comfortable at this stage. And Stewie could cause some damage here, but unfortunately, Taco says no. He takes him down. That's the scout dropped. He gets the double frag, and that should be round concluded. By all accounts, it should be. Bomb's still waiting in the tunnels. They just want kills instead. Take it slow, make sure there's no stack. Phelps will wait for the flank, and as soon as he discovers there's really not anyone heading in that direction, okay, take that back. I figured he would swing to pick up the bomb, but they'll send Fallen instead. Gives time for Tim to find a kill. It's cold that he gets of all people, but this round it's really not substantial. Well, bomb should be planted, and I'll be surprised if Cloud9 didn't get another frag here. We have Automatic with the Deagle and Armor. Speculative shot there from Fallen through the smoke. Doesn't hit anything. Bomb planted and out. The flank coming in from Tim. That was his chance to find one more shot. Couldn't get it. Fur takes him down. Four versus one now. Skadoodle once again up against it. Not really much can do. If he somehow saves a weapon, I'd be impressed. And that could be the chance, but gives his position away. Flashbang should be the end of him here. Ooh, mating each other. Be careful. Yeah, not, not exactly who flies. Here we oh, go. Skadoodle is well with two HP. It's not bad. Good headshot with the P250. Take the money he can get. Obviously, the AWP player is going to need it. He's trying to get to that AK, but can't do so. It's being guarded on the other side. And he'll back off now to oh. elongate the fight. The fight is over. 7-1. Mm. A little bit clumsy there from SK at the end, giving away a frag and damaging each other, but it's fine. They've got about 10K. Cold Zero, like we said, only died once. Well, now twice. He's got $16,000, so he's in a very good space. Buys himself up the AK-47, falling, of course, on the AWP. No one really had to perform apart from Cold Zero right now. Like he's finding absolutely every frag available. There it is, 16 for 2. Double orb set up once again. It's where Cloud9, that wasn't a, a desperate play. It seems like they're where they want to be right now on Cobblestone. There was Stewie to find the opening kill in the previous round, but we'll see if he can do it again here. 
Faster pace towards B this time. This won't be the default. This is a set piece off the bat. And against double orbs, this is how you exploit that and shut them down. Smoke's coming in. They might fully commit. Looks like they're suggesting they could fall back considering their setup. Maybe just trying to bait out the CTs, their grenades, any Molotovs they have, the flashbangs, and they will not be going all in just yet. They still have two smokes available. So this is a, a little bit of fake, if you like. Just holding up and seeing what the reaction is from the CT side. Second time they've leaned on the double op setup. Only round so far for Cloud9. There's the pistol. And it was done in style. Far more passive this time. Stewie's op's going to give up the stairs. Head back to the statue. Last time he found the opener as well toward drop room, but then was taken down by Fallen. And from drop, they get a lot closer. Fur is able to get one, so he has to reposition. The op is still beside. Fur, it pops out now. Good shot from Stewie. Draws us level as automatic holds off the back door. The E box from drop. Fallen's waiting. He's desperate. The splash goes high, and Stewie nails it. Much better from Cloud9. Didn't take the bait on the first showing with the smoke grenades and the flashbangs. Cloud9 held that nerve. They still had utility to work with, and they managed to deploy the smokes at drop down at the correct time and stop the play, stop the pincer being so powerful there from the SK side. I'd prefer SK just to go with those smokes at the start. They know the double up set is prevalent, and Cloud9 are running that right now. That's how you shut it down. Drop the smoke, segregate the bomb site. They actually maybe overfall the situation, and we still have a full buy, of course, for SK. 7 2 is the current scoreline, and an MP7 for Shroud. He's playing drop down, so that's fine, but not ideal by any stretch of the imagination. We go towards A this time. Four players investigating towards middle. Automatic spotted down to 35 HP. Lucky to get away from this one. He won't. It's going to be Phelps and Ferd double teaming him to take him down, and we go to the five on four. Skadoodle misses a key shot there. Surely can't get anything from this. Phelps punishes him. You can't miss those kind of shots. Shot indeed. Phelps to make sure he capitalized. His nothing is pushed back. Well back. Smoke down. Molotov as well. He's going to bounce it to default. But that's going to allow Phelps to know that he's closer. He's still at the oh. angle, but Phelps hits another great shot with the AK. Nothing hadn't revealed his position with utility. He may have been able to surprise them, but it's down to just Stewie and Shroud on a reset round after buying double ops. Good look at the money. Because that is the storyline now for Cloud9. Hence, they're backing off toward the B site. Saving two weapons doesn't really help them out that much. They'll probably have to force into it. The fact they've got an AWP up, I guess, is actually quite significant. Shroud saving the MP7. They will certainly have to force around those weapons, but SK know it. The options are you allow them to save this and they force around it and break their money going forward, or you hunt them down and leave them with absolutely nothing. Looks like we'll be going with the latter here. And Shroud waits on the other side of the smoke, trying to do whatever he can with the MP7. He finds kills, it's just dollars a piece. So he's happy to take some jewels here and protect Stewie. He's got the AWP, the more valuable item, of course. He doesn't allow the overcommit. They'll allow Cloud9 to stay alive for now here, but a nice change of pace for SK. We've seen primarily the focus towards the B side of the map, and that's where the smoke's been thrown. A drop down's been a massive problem for Cloud9. This time, much faster pace through the mid doors. Final automatic by himself. He was spotted early, got tagged down to 30 HP. Couldn't get away, and then that shot from Skadoodle. They had no idea he's there. He could have waited 10 seconds and taken the shot, but missed the first one, gave his position away. And we're going to run number 11. Here's the force by situation. SMGs, an M4, and AWP. This is where you have to be assertive, oh. but what can you do? When Cold there is hitting shots like that, good night, Stewie. You knew the boost was going to come in at some point in time based on Cloud9's play style, and he nails it. Great shot again. This is the beast right now. 17 kills now for Cold. Taco, he's going to push through the smoke. Behind the smoke, there is Clouds. Nothing's waiting up close. Gets the crossfire set. That should bait in from Hobbit Hole. No, they're going to push on it. They're actually going to wait. They want Automatic to be baited in entirely as they get closer to the site. And nothing actually duels against Taco successfully. Shroud's held off fur. They've got to find an opening. They've got to get one in return. And Cold is completely smoked, letting nothing get the gun. And ooh. Jump back directly in front of him. Stays in the cubby instead. Molotov looks like it's going to go that direction. They want to time it with the smoke and oh. they get it through instead. Yeah, nothing. He could feel the Molotov coming at that point as well. They wanted to wait for the smoke to go down to guarantee the frag, but they killed him before he even had a chance to move. And lucky there for nothing. Three on three, 40 seconds remaining. Still plenty of time to go back towards the A site. We've got smokes available. You can see all of Cloud9 right now in that B bomb site, taking the gamble here, and one that's not going to pay off. It's a quick play from SK. Smoke towards connector. That one smoke alone pretty much suggests the round could be over. How do you retake this bomb site? You've got one kit available, no nades, and an AWP as well. Shroud with that weapon, not known to be an AWPer at all. And they're going connector. Oh. Oh, wrap back. What is this? This is an open A site, and they go back toward the CTs. Oh my god! But they get the kills to make it work. 
risky play. Yeah, for sure. He had an open A bomb site and he just come in to find the battles, I guess. It seems to work out. Strada had no idea that was coming. He's up to automatic now. Still has a shot within this round, but he has to operate very quickly. No kit, no nades, and down to 50 HP. WP for Fall and then as well, but he has to contend with and Fall and knows exactly where he's going to be coming from. Good pre-fire to push him off the angle. Tank's fallen ever so slightly, but it gets him better position. Reload as well. Flash goes high, won't catch him. It's behind the tree. As you mentioned, no kit. No time. Go quickly, go quickly, and go down. Fallen finds it. SK pick up yet another round. Yeah, that's Fallen's specialty. Up close and personal AWP action there. Doesn't miss the shot. Wall bangs him to finish things off there. Here's the boost at the very start. It seemed like such a fast shot. Ready for this play. He knows the orb was available in this round, and Stewie taken down at the very start. Cloud9 once again after forcing in the previous round. Have to take an eco here. Default pistols and a couple of P250s and CZs. That's about it. Winning the pistol, and then the round of the double orbs as well. Oh, scoreline currently sits at 9-2. to two. Chance though, the mid-stack, a clumsy play from Fur. He gets taken down, known for his aggression, and sometimes does give his frag away for three points. And this is a prime example. No nade used, pushing through towards middle, gets wall banged down. And we have the man advantage, but no gun picked up at all for Cloud9. I think SK have actually hidden one of the weapons. They've taken it back. Smart to do so. Four men stacked up in the B side for Cloud9, and you're right about Fur's aggression. When they brought in Phelps, both of those players were playing similar in that fact, and they had to adjust it. They had to make sure that if one was going to play that style, the other could not, because it was costing them games when they first made the roster change. Yeah, we've seen it a few times in the last months. Phil Fur will go down first to questionable plays and decisions that don't really make sense. In terms of a grand final, trying to guarantee a win against pistols, go together, use all the grenades, get that slow map control coming in. He walks through the mid doors and gets punished for it. Still a very high chance of winning the round, but it certainly makes things interesting now with the CZs up. And they go back towards B. It's Taco by the bomb. It's trying to get a kill and return. Solo plays seem to be the aim of the game for SK right now. Taco's nervous as well. He thinks about Cubby. He now realizes no one's there. It goes stairs instead. Step by his teammate, wow. I think, range, but he still gets the shots. He's calmed those nerves now. Aim is everything. They line up and almost give him two. He's got another good range from Taco. He's a chance to get the ace. Stewie's in front of him. Phelps is behind Stewie, though, and I'm sure he'll just take the kill at this point in time because Stewie heads back that direction. Nonetheless, good accuracy and discipline from Taco on the firing and tapping. It's 10 to 2. They give the first frag away with that man in the screen right now. He makes the hero move towards the B bomb site. Sure, he's up against unarmored pistols, but the accuracy there was off the charts. That was so sick from Taco. Look how crisp it is finishing off these frags. Very impressive stuff, showing that Cold Zero isn't the only player showing up to this grand final so far. SK Gaming look like a very strong unit right now, hitting double digits on the T side. It's 10 to 2, and another difficult buy with Cloud9. Their money has just been in complete turmoil throughout this game. Famuses, M4s, no orbs this time, no diffuse kits, no incendiaries. I think I've painted a pretty accurate picture there for you. You can see it's not looking good for Cloud9, but have to actively work for these opening frags once again. It's Stewie on the other side of the smoke. Knows he needs to make something happen, decides to fall back for now. Long A's been a bit of an issue for Automatic. Haven't really seen him show up just yet. Six kills for him so far. Skadoodle, the main orb on four. Hasn't been good enough on the CT side. Drop looking very likely and already for a delete it. They drop down the AWP as well. So fallen one the side entrance, smoked off. Have to wait for a while before they make their move. Taco's willing to do so, patiently waiting it long. I know Cloud9's been occupying the alleyway quite a lot. So I need there's not a bad idea. Stewie's gonna rotate around and set in front statue. Cool. Watch his window, make sure when they push through as well. He cuts them off, he saves his teammates. Now he can go down. Or if he's take down Stewie and spotting up Shroud. It's into the site with Taco and Phelps at long with Bomb. Exactly where the Cloud9 players are playing. They've already figured out the setup. They've already got the damage, but they don't have nothing. And Shroud steps back up, Skadoodle as well. It's all falling apart as Cloud9 gets the crossfires in position late and they make it work. Taco is very far from his teammate. Cold bombs down between them. Cold's gone as well. It's all on to Taco. One versus three. They know he was last spotted at long, and they make it all count. As Skadoodle gets yet another kill. They find their third, and we go into round 14 with money on the side of Cloud9 finally. Promising stuff on Cloud9. Good round there. Solid play. Discipline stuff as well. Nothing. It is some fantastic shots there. Not giving his frag away either. Doing everything he can to buy time and 
run the clock down for SK. You see, 10 seconds remaining to Taco. Impossible situation. That's what we need. Calculated plays from the CT side and making sure their chance of winning the round is as high as possible. It's going to be a recovery play at this point. The orb comes out for Skadoodle. Hasn't been amazing with the weapon so far. Three kills short on the previous VM4, but he's known to be the orper. He has to go big. He's in towards danger this time, and he could just be challenged here, using a tiny gap just to spot a foot. There it is. The shoe's poking through. Takes down Fallen. Here we go. Skadoodle's starting to show oh. up now. Oh, so close. Knows he's hit Phelps. We talked about it. So she goes to the pistol, but then thinks better. If it goes back the other direction, automatic gets closer on the AK, perhaps why. He could have found the double, it would have been huge, but Phelps has bypassed them and he heads toward top mid. Shroud therefore oh no. tries to position, but the smoke, it could catch them off. He's in connector, Phelps, low HP. This would be one hell of a play, but Shroud's ready for him. Good awareness, knows this is a possibility. Automatic trying to hunt him down, but he could be taken oh. first at this point. But Shroud, good communication there between Cloud9, and they have a heavy lead, five on three. Need to get the rotations over to B quickly. Just Stewie, nothing in the sight, so Shroud wastes no time to get toward the rock. Set up a crossfire, let them get a little more aggressive as well. Stewie in specific toward the alleyway. Works out because Stewie and Shroud are the exact two protagonists to shut down SK's entrance. Taco the last again. Taco down again. Cloud9 with two in a row. Nothing's doing such a good job in this B-bomb site. He's staying alive. He's not finding all the frags. He takes an initial duel and just buys time for his teammates. You can see SK getting frustrated, hoping he takes another shot, but he's just not doing it. Flashing them back, and Taka can't get it to the bomb site until they take him down. Finally, we're seeing Skadoodle show up as well. Gets that first frag, legs the second as well, funnels him back towards B. And now it's looking more realistic for Cloud9. We're going to round number 15 here, looking for five. I'd say they'd need it from what I've seen so far, but this is looking much better. Buys coming in, still money available. That hasn't been a problem for SK throughout this first half. Orbs out. AKs as well, all the utility they need. And the orb this time, not focusing on danger towards long A for Fallen. Yeah, an inch closer. Pre-scope, no noise. It's a bit annoying in that sense for him, but nothing's already taken. Significant damage down to 53, has to back off, get closer to the site. Going for the boost at the corner, the top of the wall on the CT side. Because they had the low HP and they had to get more fortified positions that they could play off of each other better. They can't play individual with nothing sitting on half health. Forty-five in the round. Yeah. Final round here. Cloud9 need this. It's gonna be an A finish here. Taco Alona B once again. Trying to show presence and keep players on that side of the map. Smoke's available, but not many. Here's the final play. It's a boost from Automatic. Gets one as he dropped out. No! He wants to fight! Two kills coming in his favor. Cold Zero, though, finds a headshot and return. Now a 4 and 3. Time ticking away once again, and nothing doing the business along A. Good push back out. Down to just two remaining and bomb dropped in the process. 19 seconds. They have to force their hand. They have to go fast, SK. Go and fall and are slowed. Look at the amount of flashes as well. Cloud9 knows that they've saved just enough utility to make it annoying. 10 seconds. They've managed one more kill, but there's still Shroud on the site, and he's affording to sit at barrels. He can sit at barrels, and that's why. Round is done. Bomb will not be planted, and Cloud9 find number five a fighting chance for the second half. Good adjustments from Cloud9. I like that towards the end. Five rounds. Might not seem like much, but that's more than enough to work with here going forward. You can see they're looking quite jovial now. It was bleak at times. They're being shut down there. Cold Zero, they finally denied him frags, it seemed. He was just running away with that first half. We'll see if Cloud9 can pull it back, Matt. We'll take a quick break. Do not go anywhere.
A look at the top of either side. What a difference. 59 ADR is the best Shroud could get for Cloud9. 122 for Cold, who had an explosive start to the game. We knew Cloud9 CT side would struggle. They love aggression. It's hard to do on Cobblestone. Getting ecoed punished them, but to get five rounds still gives them a chance. They didn't have to rely on the aggression towards the end. It was the slower pace play, holding back, denying frags of SK. That's all worked out for them. We'll get into the second half, though. Cloud9 looking to maybe have a very fast play in towards the B side here. The bomb's there. Smoke's deployed already. That's the only smoke they have. Flashbangs towards drop down. I think they're going all in. Could be the A split. We'll see what they decide to do. That way, odds have already swung. It's gone up a point for the Cloud9 side. That said, it's gone to a very sharp point for the Cloud9 entrance. A small window by which they enter from drop and take down Cold Zero, isolating the A site and the rotations. Automatic will sit back to watch Taco and Phelps, but inside of the site, it's not easy work just yet. Stewie's got fur. That'll make it better. Automatic and Ska shut down everyone rotating over, and Taco's busy while the bomb goes down. Not got the time to play against Automatic. He's not got the time to work with. And where he is, they're not going to push him with the other three. He's going to give up. That's probably the only choice he has if he wants to give himself a chance in the round. Pinched in even tighter. Automatic puts him down. Cloud9 win their second pistol in the game. They need to convert, convert this one. Lovely, lovely round from Cloud9 there. Very simple stuff. The smoker connector. Four players in drop down, going through the window as well. It's a do or die moment. You get through there. If you find the first frag, you're probably going to win the round. CTs can shut that down, but couldn't find the opening kill. CTs give away the second half pistol as well. So that's both pistols in favor of Cloud9. There will be a force by here from the CT side. We do see Desert Eagle, CZs, a scout as well. Fur of no armor, same story for Fallen. They stole this round away in the first. Cloud9, got to be smarter with these plays now. They've got an AK, a little to work with as well. A couple of MP7s and a UMP. Utility is key on Cobblestone. Objective, get the map control first, usually towards Long A where they're heading right now. Push those CTs back. Work out the stackers on this side of the map. Try and get the first pick. They get a five and four. They've got a very good chance of winning the round. CTs shouldn't be able to overwhelm them here. Hey, just to make sure anyone that was at hay bales would take damage. Fur and Fallen. Already electing to back off. Scout for Fallen. We know can wreak havoc. We know can punish teams yeah, if given sure. a line of sight. That's it. Well, we need to work out what they're up against here. They've got that map control I discussed. Drop down is theirs. So is Long A in danger. It's looking like to maybe be an A finish here. Back towards A they go from B. So they don't want to split. They don't want to walk into anything unorthodox. Stay together, though. Get those refrags going. That's when you're going to be your absolute best. There's a five-man unit, so the CTs can't spray you all down. Nothing already hit. Down to 29 HP as they get closer onto the site. Smoke off the doorway. This is where that scout becomes punishing, but they get it down. He couldn't hit the second shot and do better damage to help the pistols, and they're already swung inside of the site to catch fur off behind the APC. Hope helps Taco all walking in from B, all held out by connector. Plant for Cloud9 means around nothing they'll be able to do on the SK side. In fact, with upgraded pistols, with armor, we know the CTs cannot buy in the third round. They're looking to sit back and try and do as much damage as they can without giving up too easily. That's perfect from Cloud9. Exactly how I described it should be played. Pushing those CTs back along A. Getting control of drop down as well. Getting as a five-man unit, deploying the smokes, eradicating Rick. Smoke connector. Smoke the murder hole as well. Stay together, find the frags. Don't fall for any bait and switch plays there. Fallen going down, trying to bait his teammates in. They didn't fall for it. Checked every single angle still, even when they found frags. Bomb goes down, five players surviving. That's much better from Cloud9. And now we really do have a game on our hands here. 10-7. And as you said, SK Gaming got to be on a full eco going into round number three. They do say the CZs and head armor, but that's not really much. It's not going to win them around. Well, I say that with bait, but they shouldn't win them the round. But anything can happen with Cold Zero and that weapon. Here we go. The Cloud9 fans are starting to believe now, it seems. They Something to cheer about. Man. Yeah. He's not giving up easily. Double MP7, UMP, two rifles. And a whole lot of utility. And armor on everyone so the pistols can't do damage. Or at least negate the damage by which they would dish out. It's Stewie to head closest toward the bottom of the middle. Good find from Shroud already to get fallen, but watch for his position. They have to check that. You know, they're there. Oh, he's got one already. Head armor won't save them that close. Good thing they respond fast enough as Taco, though, is still going to find Skadoodle. It's getting costly already, I have to say. There's an AK down. One of the 
SMGs could happily switch to if they can get close enough by it. No. Nothing. He's lost HP. He's on seven. They stack up to find him. Jumping over. It's no. automatic to save them. They can't quite, but Shroud gets the round. And just barely, they get away with it. That's... How you throw the rounds away almost there. Just going very quickly, not feeling the map out. They just about win it, so no harm, no foul. But they know how close that was. You give anything of SK to work with there. And opening jewels, that's their specialty. And the CZs do a lot of damage, but just about pulled the round through. It's fine. They'll upgrade now to rifles across the board. And all for Skadoodle, of course. Same story for Fallen. He's glass cannon, though. Mini has no armor. One shot to the chest. Flings his crosshair up in the air. Thumbs with the Famous. No kits here. So for the first time, SK struggling. The economic side of the game. Default for now from Cloud9. And I just could just to watch that upper platform, see if anyone will give him the opportunity to find the first kill. Shots coming in. He knows his presence there, but CT's not giving him too much to work with. Start the charge again for Shroud. This was Shroud's specialty. When this map first was on the radar, it actually was very good at opening things up on his upper platform. Only got to get all this time. Investigates the close range positions, but finds nothing so far. Skidoodle's going to be smoked off the angle. SK. Push Cloud9 back just a little bit. 57 seconds, still time to work with. Utilities being bled. There's two smokes left, that's it for the SK side. Cloud9 know that. They know they're going to be limited, so that's hence why they're playing the slow style. Trying to bleed them as they grab the bomb. Stewie's to pick it up. Automatic's already down inside of the drop room as well. Phelps will wait. Oh, he's going to play this. This is so, so risky because look how far apart they are. Even if he pushed through that smoke to try and surprise them when they walk by, it'd only be one player. He'd be caught in the middle. Instead, he goes to the arch. The arch oh. works for one. Good shot back by nothing through the smoke. Gets the angle perfect, and Automatic gets the entry from drop room onto Taco. Getting closer still, Fallen fights back with his AWP. They've not yet get the plant, gotten the plant in. A second smoke to allow Shroud to do so. Nothing has to back off. They want post plants rather than the fight early. It lets SK get so close to Shroud. He's almost left hanging. He's almost sacrificial at this point. Left on top of the statue. He's got to fight for himself. Can't do it. Gets the information. Fallen follows it up as nothing has to clutch back. One versus three. Angle's not there and SK find 11. It was looking good for Cloud9 though, when the bomb was going down, it's that one key frag. If Shroud gets it, manages to find the timing there, they probably win that round. Or will set Skadoodle up, allow him to hit some shots to the AWP, but too frantic towards the end. Can't pull it off, they should be actually in a decent position. Shroud's got $10,000, so he'll drop some weapons over. The double orb setup comes out for SK this time. 11-8 is your scoreline. Now we're getting to the crucial stage of the game. Cloud9 rebuying into this one. This will send them to Eco, they can't actually pull this round off. And then we could find ourselves at a 13-8 scoreline. So, another default from the looks of things. Three towards B, nothing in Stewie holding the mid area. Fur goes towards long end. Fallen patrolling top middle with the AWP. No aggressive stuff on their side, as of yet. Very standard, Cold Zera tentatively watching the window in the connector position, to seeing if anyone tries to take that area over. Automatic managed to obtain control in the previous round, but SK were fine with that. And you can be, you don't have to actively challenge in that particular area. Yes, it can be a nuisance, but so difficult to hold as a CT side. So on the AK, Skadoodle, not only has Chad mentioned he's been more proficient on rifles as of late, but he's also been yeah. more aggressive with his positioning because he's the closest to the mouth of the beach site. <laughs> So he's willing to take the duels early rather than play off of information, which a lot of, when you see AWP players on rifles, tend to do. They tend to sit back and play off the second kill going in, playing off the teammates in front of them. He's not just going to sit back and do that. So already getting closer. His automatic again has drop room for Cloud9. Yeah. Very similar to the previous round, but that's not falling with the first shot. Takes Stewie down, might be able to fall back here as well. He knows there's a chance of the refrag and fallen. Just on point as ever, finds the first two opening kills. And this will leave them comfortable as well because Fur and Fallen are so pushed out in A. They know there's no one else there. Oh. It's got to be on B, which means Cold can stay closer. But Shroud opens it. Slow reactions from Automatic. And Shroud's got another. He's the last in this. Two kills. Bomb down over to his right behind the arch. Can't find a shot on Cold, who lines it up. Cold's just continuing to accumulate kills. 24 now for him. Yeah, the closest teammate to him is on 13. That's Fur and Phelps to be fair as well. But Cold's there. Absolute monstrous performance here. Stroud has some great plays as well, I have to say. He gets two very nice shots there on the B bomb side. He's currently at 17 kills, 15 deaths. Probably been one of the best tournaments in recent memory for him. Uh, he's obviously had a, 
some hardships recently in terms of his performance as, uh, when this team's been struggling, but this is looking like a revitalized play from him. We'll see what round number 21 holds. It is going to be pretty much the full eco here. P250s, Deagles as well, no armor. And you can see Taco, a bit cheeky here with the MP9. Not a nice ideal weapon, but you can farm some cash and have a lot of mobility with it. Deep smoke from Taco obviously means he's going to peek after it, hoping that he can get full control of the lane. Realizes they're inside of the smoke, and therefore backs off, so... All by design, all thought out. Now trying to get the Deagle shot. Knows that Taco is in near the broken wall, but what he doesn't know is that Phelps, playing off of that, has gotten the stairwell position. Tentative they are. They don't want to give up the rifles. Give away the guns. Shoulder shot on his round. Decent damage. That'll allow the push on the back of the flash. Taco doesn't get away with much, though. Or, excuse me, Phelps, rather, comes up to follow it. And now with the flash, you'd expect them to just mop it up. They're making it somewhat costly, but... Yeah. Yeah, and Cold knows it. They will still close it out, and you said it. 13-8 because of the money. Cloud9 has to buy back in. This round is everything. It absolutely is. A little bit problematic there for us here, giving two frags away. Maybe trying to end it quicker than it had to, but still... Round number 22, coming to the closing sectors now. Have Cloud9 got anything left in the tank? No AWP available for them. Money was not there. Scudoodle once again with the AK-47. That seems to be the weapon of choice for him in this map. He's, that's what he's getting from early most of his kills. So, where, what's the player at this stage? Fast B by the looks of things. We've got every player towards the upper platform. All five. And Taco, he's got the AWP this time. Boost up and drop down. A lot of intel gathered for him. WP holding top of the drop, it's Phelps instead there to get nothing, watch the flash because his timing, they don't go through it, they were blind as well, leaves him in the open, they still find Phelps, the gap in the smoke, only good for one more, but it drops Ooh. the bomb, Stewie, he's been slow, he was at the bottom of the scoreboard for Cloud9, exactly what they need, a better entrance, but look at the HP, and similarly, as they put the bomb down, they push up into three versus three, the difference, Stewie again finds another kill, an automatic, with one HP, is going to sit back to play off him, Taco and Fall with not much on the entrance, WP finds the return frag. They get inching, inching closer to the site. Stewie's had enough of it. He's gonna fight! Oh, look for his fourth. Tag was there. Damage done, but it's the bomb they have to play off of. Good flash in. Stewie's up to four, and it's Fallen that taps it. Goes back the other way, and Stewart with the ace! Cloud9 needed it now more than ever, and they'll get exactly the name by which they are after, number nine. What a performance from Stewie there. The opening kills were great, but the follow-ups even better. Precision with the AK-47 sends SK Gaming packing in round number 22. Nothing they could do there. The double ops trying to retake together. It wasn't ideal. The low HP was there, but nothing they could do about that. They still have enough to buy. They might take a pause at this point just to work out what the stage is at this point. So we've got 9k for fur. They are going to be buying up, and it's going to be a case of distributing the wealth out accordingly. But Stewie 2 came out. That was fantastic. He's been quiet all game to find five frags like that. Just what Cloud9 needed. It's got them right back in this game. Losing that one, that could have cost him the map. He had eight kills before that round. Obviously, do the math. He's on 13 now, but it's impact that matters, not kill total. And that's about as good as it gets. When you consider the economic situation late in the game, Cloud9 trailing, and now they've got a chance to break SK. It's massive, massive round from him. And Cloud9 picking up a second op to carry over, go double op on a T side, which is a risk, but we'll see how aggressive they can be. Certainly a risk. Stewie though, different play style to most Dorpers. Loves to run around the map, loves to open things up with flashy flick shots. We'll see if he can do that here. Holding still for now, waiting for any CT plays, just trying to ascertain what kind of information you can get from the opening default. What weapons do SK Gaming have? Do they have grenades? Is there an all around? And certainly is on this side of the map. Fallen, ready and waiting. So good at the shot. He'll be flashed, but he somehow hits the shot every single time, it seems. There it is again. Takes down nothing. Fur flashed in. Behind the wall, they find it. He was waiting for his chance to strike. He never what? gets it. Oh, Fallen, uncharacteristic miss, but they jump in overconfidently, and he never misses twice. At least not in a row, because he did miss twice, but he got the kill in between. Skadoodle's going to capitalize the second time by, but they're still down. Man, and Phelps is trying to flank. UMP from range can't do it, but it baits in Taco. Skadoodle on the AWP. Oh. We said it was a risk to double up. Tries for even a jump shot. Desperation at that point. 14 rounds SK. And a pause immediately called by Cloud9. They know how much that's going to hurt them. They're down around the 2K mark. 2,700 for nothing is the most they have for money right now. Yeah, loving this round from Fallen. A couple of misses, sure, but that shot made up for it. 
buying his teammates enough time. That was a difficult force by Fresca as well. UMP is available, and a couple of Thamuses as well. The Orb is the weapon, of course. Fallen New had to step up. 14-9 now. The pause indeed will come in. That's the reset. There's about 2k per player in the Cloud9 camp. CZ's Tech 9s. Touch is starting to happen now. They obviously have to force into their left cell be too huge otherwise to take the eco here. The end pause comes in. Skadoodle. The final player to buy here. Leaves his money at 1700 for now. Wants to save some money for the potential of the orb going forward, I guess. That's just you and I, Henry. Hanging out like a couple of lovebirds. <laughs> Couple of friendly chickens. Round number 24, here we go, map. Do or die for Cloud9. Ooh, fast smokes. We saw Virtus Pro take a variation on these. Slow them down for a set piece. They just want the wall. They want to get in and surprise SK very fast. Already through the Molotov below the broken wall as Shroud gets up the alleyway as well. Can't go backwards. Taco smokes himself on a chicken coop, reveals he's oh. there, good shot on nothing, but the damage has already been dealt to him, which means he's a sitting duck, and down he goes to skadoodle the flank from first better, and it's map point for SK. Map point indeed, 15-9, that was the force by the last chance for Cloud9, it'll have to be a similar case here, going to round number 25, they go for that fast B execution, dropping the smoke, hoping to overwhelm the double orb setup, but Taco fighting back, there was not enough focus towards that chicken coop area, and here we go, map points. The first map in this best of five, this was SK's pick. Remember, Cloud9 got to choose the CT stop. That was a really slow burner for them. They've started to look better, though. We started to see some of the stars come out. Stewie, that fantastic round before, and Shroud of a decent performance here. Have impressed me, but I feel that the deficit was too large to recover from in that early first half. So Tech Nines and CZ once again. Smokes, flashbangs. Cloud9 surely have nothing to do in this round. We fell spraying through the opening smoke, but there's a headshot. Something to work with now. Some damage on Phelps will help. It's really picking, it seems. Drop room. Go. Cold backs off. Knows they're already inside of it as Taco gets a decent shot onto Stewie. Go backs off even further. They'll give them the room. That's fine. They don't necessarily care about that. They care more about keeping the distance at range for the rifles to prevail over the Tech Nines. Smoke on the inside of the E box. A lot of room given up toward the B site. They almost want to play a retake at this point, SK. Does it cost them? Phelps is low. Chicken Coop, only one directly inside of the site. No one's checking it just yet. Good shot, Taco, as they walk in. And now Phelps strikes. M4 works. Bombs inside of the smoke. It's at least planted, but it's two players only for Cloud9, as nothing capitalizes on the low HP. They've got tight angles to hold. Headshots there. Headshots there, but nothing. Has three more to find, and Fallen gets him through the smoke. We go one nothing in a best of five for SK. Yeah. Decent showing from SK Gaming there. Cloud9 looked a bit out their depth in the first half. Remember as well, they win both pistols in its opening map and only find nine in total. There were some promising rounds there towards the end. They start to show as they can hold them off and five rounds in the city half wasn't really enough, but they seemed to adjust their game plan and that was key. Didn't sit, let their heads drop down. A few big clutches there as well, but Cold Zero, what can you say about that? The way he was playing in the first eight or so, four frags, it felt like every single round, they just couldn't shut him down and fair enough, Cloud9, not really much you can do in the world's very best player. He's posting that sort of performance. Ends with 28 kills, just Cold Zero. Taco, the next behind, at 19. Everyone in Cloud9 was keeping up with all the others. He was just that far ahead. Yeah. You talk about the impact of his rounds as well. The AK entrance from Drop, where he gets three kills. The pistol clutch on an eco yeah. that really sets Cloud9 back, because we saw the second half was a bit of a brawl. We knew it was going to be when Cloud9 got on the terrorist side, but it really hindered any chance they had of the CT, which is what they needed, in my opinion, on, on this map. So very good performance from him. And SK, as we expected, do take the map. But this is a series. This is on. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to see what the ma next map holds. Matthew, I think we're going to throw it over to the lovely gentleman over the analyst desk. The Pay Safeguard post-match breakdown. SK, one step to redemption, revenge, and a trophy. Cloud9 unable to muster, well, what, Cl what Cloud9 couldn't do on this map, Cold Zera could. What an adventure that was. Joined by Sponge and YNK, and round two, gentlemen. 
kicking the kicking the teeth, kicking the teeth to start things off and yeah. cl climbing their way back from the uh, from that gate. Go Stylish way to start from Cold Zero, right? You know, he just wants to get in there with a one v three with a CZ, which I hate players who have that on the T side. <laughs> Why do you have that over the Tech Nine? It doesn't make any sense, but he makes it work. Yeah. I think there was like 16 seconds left on the clock. Pulls it out. <sighs> maybe you could say a bit of a blunder from Cloud9. Well, there's no maybe about it, is there, really, Yanko? From a completely uh, unfiltered perspective, the rounds like that can't happen. Yes, if you want to be completely objective, there's no reason for them to challenge him as much, right? They can play the time. He didn't have the yeah. bomb even. They knew where, where the bomb was, but they probably had the call that he was low. They wanted to, you know, they know he only has a pistol. Why risk it? Let's of just course. get rid of him. And sometimes in the heat of the moment, you know, within the game, you want to start off strong. You want to shut him down. You know, you want to show him who's boss, mm. peek him, kill him, even though it's not the optimal play. And uh, they definitely got punished for it this time. I mean, 25 rounds and I, I'm sorry, I, 28 frags. This is one of the few situations where you can actually see the impact of the nerf of the UMP because Shroud yeah. was the last player who challenged him. He had the UMP. From 17 HP, he left him on four. And that's probably the, the difference. And that's something on Cobblestone that you actually see players who play a drop don't play the UMP as much. They go for the FAMAS because when they have to rotate towards A, yeah. before you could take that battle from connector to stables and still win it with the UMP, but now it's not as consistent. So it shows you how actually that does have some yeah. impact uh, in this game. I mean, is this one of the first instances you've kind of seen of this, Chad? You've seen the UMP actually be a, a hindrance to some teams. We know that, you know, the likes of FaZe have started to, you know, remove it from their gameplay. We saw Cloud9 bringing more MP7s into the mix. It's definitely tapered off, right? It hasn't it hasn't been as popular as it once was. Obviously, the kill bonus is still there, and it, it's still very strong as a weapon, but teams are moving away from it, which I like. I'm a bit of a, yeah. uh, a purist in that regard. It's great to be able to use, if you can use it correctly around the smokes or in the, in the very close uh, qu quarters, I, I guess, but when you need to use it in a rotation situation like Yanko's talking about, it's no good. It makes absolutely no sense and it, it, I'm happy that the game is swinging that way but we have to note that Cloud9 they uh, they won both pistols right they won both pistols and yeah. they only had was it nine rounds yeah. yes that's right this is an unfortunately one of those segments where we don't really have to say that much because it was called zero having an amazing game in the first half yeah. and most of the rounds you could see that for example SK was just you using the times uh, wasting the clock waiting for the utility from cloud nine to end and if you look at what cloud could have maybe tried to do which is extremely difficult to execute on cobble is try to go for some mid round aggression right pop flash into mid try to get information there try to get a kill on phelps perhaps or do it towards b platform but yeah. sk there's a reason why they're the world's best team at the moment they're just so good at not allowing you to get any information or to punish you when you go aggressive yeah. yourself so you could see how cloud nine that was the big problem and the fact that they would get reset all the time. They didn't really have that many pure gun rounds to work with. And outside of the fantastic information plays or rest restricting information from SK, Taco and boys had some fantastic just raw fragging. We get to see it again. You know, sometimes it's easy to get sidelined by their incredible synergy, their mid-round calling and everything Yanko and Chad find themselves mentioning. But sometimes it is just these guys are incredibly good at Counter-Strike. Taco in particular was living up to that entry fragger role. You can see some of the stuff he was up to just here from the plateau. Just the name map really though, yeah, You know, he's just taking jewel after jewel. Everything was coming his way, kind of in the matrix. We saw another round like that from um, Cold Zero. He yeah. did the same thing coming out of the drop zone, getting every kill that he that came to him and almost, uh, I think he did get the ace, but Stewie had a really good round as well. Yeah. He had a, you know, a very pivotal round. It was, quite individual in a lot of those rounds. You don't want to, normally when you play fundamentally sound Counter-Strike, the kills kind of fall to the people who they're meant to and you're going to lose a few trades and then you might win a situation, you know, a 3v2 or something like that. But the way this was going on, it was just one guy was going in and just wrecking heads. Yeah. And on either side of the uh, server as well, this is a couple of glimpses of what Fallen was up to. There was pressure applied to him. He wasn't necessarily having the greatest game, but you can see this CQB orping we talk about, that close quarters, the combat orper. Most of his kills happening almost with the, uh, the the rifle to his belly button. It's you, incredible. You see those positions. These, that's what I talk about when he's when you play limbo, right? The, being in limbo. He's sure. not in a line. You expect an orper to sit at like connector sure. or you know invent room, and they watch a line, and then they move to another line. He's happy and he's confident in his orping ability that he can stay in those close quarter areas, always grab one, get away when he should get hunted down, and still be able to get a secondary frag. It's like this shouldn't be happening. No, not at all. And for Cloud9 fans in the arena, they're probably thinking the same thing. This shouldn't be happening. The guys here on the desk, you talked about it before. You said that the map veto actually made you lean even further towards SK. These kind of maps are where the Brazilians do thrive. The next one is no exception. Train is where we'll be talking next after a short break. Yes, indeed. SK will try and extend it to two in a best of five as we talk about Train after this.